Flowing below the wooded heights of Black Mountain is a river of green called Grassy Cove. It's absolutely incredible. We're one of Tennessee's most beautiful places. This is like a miniature cage cove without going all the way into the Smokies right there. It's secluded like it is right here, and one way in, one way back out. You know, it's just a unique place. Formed around 250 million years ago, this lush valley protected by the Cumberland Mountains is actually the largest sinkhole in North America, six miles long and three miles wide. It's actually what is called a geological anticline. That's when two tectonic plates collide and one is bent up and so it's folded. And that exposes a lot of vertical layers of limestone and over time, that limestone is dissolved by water. The dissolved rock creates something called karst topography, a landscape filled with caves, sinkholes, and underground streams. Acting as a catch basin, the cove funnels water from the mountains underground, flowing south, before resurfacing as the headwaters of the Sequatchie Valley. It's geologically a very special place. A place worth preserving something the Tennessee Parks and Greenways Foundation has been working to do for some time. In 2001, we worked with the state of Tennessee and our donors and purchased the top of Black Mountain, 518 acres, spectacular view. You can see all the way to the Smokies from up there. The foundation also helped secure another 352 acres on Brady Mountain, where the Cumberland Trail traverses the mountaintops along the west side of the cove, and 385 acres to the south of Devil Step Hollow, home to cave art more than a thousand years old. It's Mississippian era, and it's pictographs, petroglyphs, and mud glyphs, and it's perhaps the most significant cave art that's been found in North America so far. It's just an incredible area. Now they have their sights set on another part of the cove, a thousand acres of mature forest filled with wildlife on Brady and Bear Den Mountains. We're trying to conserve this thousand acres in its natural state, like it is now, and obviously better in the future. The caves, the sinkholes, the stream of water, its purity. Steve Walsh has brought some of the foundation's donors out to experience firsthand what they're trying to protect. You're scrambling up these rocks, and you hear the birds above you, see the wild turkeys flying right by us as we walked up here. It's a spectacular experience. And this has been going on for hundreds and thousands of years. People have been on this mountain, the Native Americans before us, experiencing this. This land has been a part of Tommy Kemmer's life since before he was born. We've been here 150 plus years right there. Actually, I think my aunt found a deed maybe 1837. Tommy grew up exploring these mountains. Now he and his family would like for other people to be able to make their own discoveries turning down offers to sell the land for more money in the hope it can become a park or natural area. You can see something different every time you go in the woods. After 50 years, you'd think you'd seen it all, but you don't. I'm still exploring it. <laughs> One place Tommy hasn't explored just yet is Robert's Pit, a vertical cave around 60 feet deep, named after his grandfather. Today, these biologists with the TWRA are going in to look for endangered bats. In the area, we do have several Indiana bat hibernaculas and uh, gray bat hibernaculas. Uh, we haven't found any yet on this piece of property, but a new cave was actually found on the property, and uh, there was uh, staining on the wall that would be characteristic of gray bats. So far, they found several species on the property, including the federally endangered northern long-eared bat. And while today's excursion didn't produce any gray bats, a trip to another one of the 11 named caves on the property yields a significant discovery. Desmagnathus, they have really strong back legs and they're pretty good at jumping. Commonly called the Cumberland Dusky Salamander, these red and green colored critters are a rare find. It's not a listed species, but it's a species of greatest conservation need. They're not very common. Cold mountain streams along the plateau like this one is where they're most often found. Here on the Kemmer property, the salamanders are relatively abundant. That won't be the case if these majestic trees are cut down or the land becomes scarred by development. 
The Kemmers have done a phenomenal job of keeping the ecosystems and the forests in place, and uh, that's the way we want to keep it going into the future. So not only will hikers be able to come through and enjoy incredible mountains, but it'll be important for wildlife too, from the birds that come migrating from Central America to the salamanders that are living in the creeks here. The forest protects that, and it's the individuals in the state of Tennessee and state parks that are making this all happen and protecting it so that it will always be like this. But protection comes at a price. $2.2 million is the cost for this conservation project. It's a goal that is daunting, but achievable when people pitch in to help. We desperately need contributors right now. We need people who are willing to step up and say, hey, I want to make a difference. I want to be a part of this. I want my legacy to be I've helped preserve this piece of wonderful property in Grassy Cove. It would be a treasure for uh, Tennesseans and everybody else to be able to come here and hike around and enjoy these features. You can't remake this if you had all the money in the world. You can't make this right here, you know. So I thought it's important to share with other people, you know, my kids, hopefully my grandkids next, to be able to see it like it is today.